Good evening. Good evening. It is great to have you here on this, uh, on this very special night, on this very holy night, on this wondrous night. It's an amazing night in which we celebrate that God uh, loves and cares for us. And so what a wonderful thing to be able to see God touch uh, the kids in this place, your kids. Um, but he also touches each one of us. Uh, for each one of us, uh, he's got a message to tell. Each one of us, a way to be able to touch us. You know, it is... Uh, it's an amazing thing uh, as we come together and we do and we do a play and we make things that are just absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful together, to put ourselves back into that original Christmas story and to realize that it probably looked a little different, probably smelled a little different, was a little bit more chaotic uh, than perhaps uh, that we experience it, not as well choreographed, uh, so even with the interesting things that, uh, that we deal with. Um, and it, if we put ourselves back into the minds and experience of those, those first people, say Mary and Joseph, uh, when they were here, uh, it, they must have had a certain feeling about all of this uh, before the angel came. They lived kind of a hard life together. And, uh, and there must have been a sense for them of, of just, kind of, just kind of being, th that life was just kind of hard, it was kind of tough for them as a young married couple, or young soon-to-be-married couple trying to figure out what life was going to be like. Um, and sometimes, I think people were tempted to think that perhaps God had forgotten them, that perhaps God hadn't remembered where they were, and that's why life was so difficult for them. And I think for a lot of us, sometimes it's easy to think that God has somehow forgotten us, that God has somehow moved on with other things that he feels like are more important than maybe we are. That issue of being forgotten is a, is a theme that's kind of in our hearts a lot of times. If you were a kid, uh, you might remember uh, an experience of what it's like to be forgotten. If you're a parent, you might remember an experience of what it's like to forget one of your kids. Um, there was a movie that for us is, a, is just kind of a regular modern classic for around the Christmas time that we, that we play in our family. It's the movie Home Alone. Anybody seen Home Alone? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it just wouldn't around our house be Christmas if we didn't at some point watch Home Alone. And there is this scene. You remember, it's, so it's the McAllister family. And they are uh, they're planning on this big uh, European vacation, right? They're going to fly to Paris. And all of this, the house you know, fills with all of their relatives and all of the people. And they go to bed. And the next morning, they're going to wake up early and they're going to go to the airport. Well, of course, they oversleep. And, uh, and all of a sudden, they realize they've got to hurry up and get to the airport. And so they scramble around and they grab everybody. And they run out to the cars and they run to the airport. And they run through the airport. And finally, they get on the plane. And the mom and the dad, whose name are Pete and Peter and Kate, are finally, there's this kind of moment of relaxation. You know, they're there on the plane. And finally, it's been all done. And they can just let the pilot of the plane take them to their destination. And yet, the mom is just kind of, there's this thing going around in her head. And she knows it's just, it's just something that isn't quite right. And so she says um, to her husband, Peter, she says, uh, did I turn off the coffee? And he says, no, but I did. And then she says, oh. he said, did you lock up? And he says, yeah. He said, did, did we set the timers on the lights? And he says, yeah. He said, did you close the garage? That's it. I forgot to close the garage. That's it. And so finally she sits back and relaxes. And the two of them relax. And all of a sudden they said, oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. What else, he says, should we, could we possibly be forgetting? And so they just kind of have this puzzled look back, and they lay back on their chairs, and they think, and then all of a sudden, both of them sit up bolt right, and they say, Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> they forgot their kid, right? Their youngest son. And then the whole rest of the story is about the fact that they've got to land in Europe and figure out a way to get back there, and Kevin, who's there in this big house all by himself over Christmas, needs to figure out how he's going to survive. They're all by himself. There is this thing in us about being forgotten, something that we don't like very much about being forgotten. We want to know that we are special to somebody, that somebody is remembering us. In fact, Mother Teresa wrote... Um, one time she said, being unwanted, 
unloved, uncared for, forgotten by everybody, I think that is a much greater hunger, a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to eat. Think about that. Than the person who has nothing to eat, a much greater hunger is being forgotten. There is something that's deep inside of us that does not want to be forgotten and is afraid that maybe uh, we have been. Uh, the, what, one of the things that's amazing about this story is, is why, why the central characters are actually so forgettable. I mean, they really are very forgettable kinds of people, aren't they? I mean, Mary. Think about it. Mary and Joseph. They're just two young kids who are in love who just want to get married, like billions of others throughout history. They don't, they're not royalty. They're not particularly rich. You know, this, this, we wouldn't know anything about Mary and Joseph if it weren't for the events of this night. And all of a sudden, an angel appears to them and says to Mary, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. You don't have a diploma, you don't got money, but the Lord is with you. And these shepherds, what about these shepherds? I mean, what is, what is memorable about them? They're scallywags. The rascals, they're people who are in the very bottom rungs of society. They're the people who other people didn't want to hang out with, and so they were out there with the sheep in the country. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's to them, not to the kings, not to the powerful people, but it's to them that the angel comes. And the angel speaks to him, and the angel reveals the purposes of God um, to these angels. It says, um, today... In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, he says. He is the Christ, the Lord. To you, these, eight, these shepherds, who cares? And then a whole chorus of shepherds who sing. <laughs> it's an amazing tune that we sing together. The angels singing to the shepherds that the Lord has come to them. Rascals and scallywags. And then what about... You? What about you? What makes you so special? What makes you so wonderful? So such a standout that three generations from now, books will be written about you, people will remember you. Except for that, the love of God remembers you. God remembers you. He knows you. He cares about you. Whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, whatever cares and concerns, whatever worries, hopes, expectations, disappointments, embarrassments they are, he knows you. He cares for you. And through the pages of history, his love and his grace on this night streak like lightning through the universe and speak to you about a sign of his love in the gift of this little baby called Jesus, the Savior of the world. It was the prophet Isaiah writing 400 years before the birth of Jesus who encapsulated it all, looking forward to this one who was to come. And he says, for to us a child is born, for to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I don't know why you're here tonight. I don't know what brings you here. But I want to tell you this thing. God loves you. God loves you, and he wants to reveal his love to you, to touch you, to shine his glory and his light in your life, and for you to know that you have been remembered. You are not forgotten. And he is here wanting to work in your life. Thanks be to God. So let us worship him on this night. Thanks for coming.